Tonight, experts say hundreds of animals all over the world are at risk of disappearing forever. And they say for the first time in the Earth's history, this mass extinction event is because of all the people. ABC Action News in-depth reporter Rochelle Aline spoke to several experts tonight to get to the bottom of this issue and learn more about the solutions that are out there right now. This is the fifth nest I've been to today. After more than a decade of monitoring eagles, Roger Newell has become something of an expert. A lot of times I just sit in my truck and to watch him. But even after all that time, his excitement about a sighting is still fresh. Primarily because I can get there real quick, you know, right. and that, that is an eagle right up there. Catching him mid-sentence as we spoke. And I'm sure it's in that pine tree back behind these trees. And uh, <laughs> this Valrico nest is one of 19 that he tracks as part of the Eagle Watch program for Audubon, Florida. It's a nonprofit that focuses on conservation efforts for birds in our state. The goal is to be the eyes and ears of the group so they can keep tabs on the state's eagle population. Oops, going wrong way. Sorry. He's also a member of the Raptor Center of Tampa Bay that rescues birds of prey in the area. The nonprofit's founder, Nancy Murrah, tells us that eagles hold a special place in her heart because technically they shouldn't be here after a brush with extinction in the 60s. Today, they're, they're truly a success story. If you look at back when I was a little girl, there was very few eagles in the lower 48 states. Um, today, I think there's 2,500 pairs in Florida. But even with their recovery, Murrah isn't fully breathing a sigh of relief. I can tell you, I look into the nest and I know they're doing better, and I still worry. I still think that just because they're not on the endangered species list doesn't mean we don't need to keep taking care of them and watching them and making sure they're safe. To understand the true scope of the current dangers these birds are facing. I'm Sean Lee Breeding, that's S. -A. We spoke to a leader with the Audubon Center for Birds of Prey in the Orlando area. They have a lot of threats here in Florida, especially with the rate of development. Anytime you have a lot of people, a lot of eagles get struck by cars. They are scavengers. They will eat roadkill along with the vultures. So a lot of them will get struck while they're on the side of the road eating. Um, they get electrocuted. They get poisoned from rodenticide, which gets used in a lot of urban areas. And she tells us once again, the answer to protecting them lies with us. I think just in a general, any way you can look at your own life and what you're doing. Are you recycling or trying to just take small steps? Everyone can do one small thing, I think. But more than 100 miles south, just off the beaten path at Florida Gulf Coast University in Fort Myers, we learned from a biologist and animal behavior expert that the conservation efforts we've given to some animals like eagles haven't spread evenly to other species. So we are in the middle of what is identified as the sixth mass extinction throughout the history of life on the planet. There have been five mass extinctions and these have eliminated upwards of over 90% of the species. Right now, we're in the first extinction that's not about something extra terrestrial or climate. This is a human-based mass extinction. Dr. Billy Gunnels also tells us that the extinction rate for many plants and animals is speeding up. And a good example of this is the number of large mammals that are on land masses, terrestrial large mammals. They are down by over 70% since 1970. It means that elephants are still there, but the overall number of the elephants has dramatically declined. But it's a grim reality that doesn't have to stay that way. I worked at that sanctuary for two years and a student of Dr. Gunnels points to a familiar Florida staple as another prime example. We have made a lot of success in Florida, especially with, um, I use the American alligator a lot because it's such a great example of how we've saved a species. So those numbers were dwindling and we were losing alligators from hunting and habitat loss. And now we have 1.25 million alligators just from listing it as an endangered species, implementing monitoring programs, protecting it legally. Gedwar and Gunnels are also seeing the work to reverse the current extinction rate take root in real time in Africa <laughs> and in the Peruvian rainforest. Well, Peru has been very proactive trying to come up with ways in which people can live there, use a farm, 
slash and burn, but then proactively raise the tree crops that will be able to seed a new forest will also provide those farmers some economic resource when they come back 25, 35 years later. And it's a mindset of living and developing with nature in mind that they say we need to adopt more broadly here in America. If we don't try to coexist, we're not going to be successful. And the reason we're not going to be successful is because there are so many people and people have needs. If we're just telling you the only way you can protect nature is by disengaging with it, separating, putting it over there, I don't think we're going to be successful. And back in Valrico, as Newell and Murrah set their sights on the future of Florida's eagles, they agree. It's nobody's responsibility to take care of wildlife, so therefore it's everybody's responsibility. In Valrico, with photojournalist Josh Whitston, I'm in-depth reporter Rochelle Aline. All right, let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Dennis.